Hey, what's up everyone? Chris here from Brick Players Union, and in this video I'm going to share with you my Lego Mock High School Modular Building. So, let's check it out. Now this video is my 100th video here on the channel, and if that isn't cause enough for celebration, the subject of this video is a very special build that has been many months in the making. Now, if you've ever built a large-scale mock, whether it's a building or a large vehicle, etc., then I don't have to tell you how much time and effort goes into designing, gathering up all the parts, building, redesigning, ordering more parts, rebuilding, and so on until you get it just right, which is why this mock was so time-consuming. And at first glance, this mock might seem like a fairly simple and straightforward design, but once we get into it and start to take a closer look at the build itself and all the details, you'll start to see why it took me so long. Now, the building itself is modeled after the high school that I graduated from, which is huge. In fact, it's one of the biggest in the state. But in order to keep its size to fit on a 32 by 32 base plate, I decided to just build the main center section of the building. So, as we take a look at the front of the building, starting on the ground level, we can see there is a pair of doors that lead into the gymnasium. On either side of those doors are pillars topped off with one of my favorite Lego elements of all time, the molded lion heads. And these lion heads are topped off with some lighting fixtures. There's also a set of steps on each side that lead up to a main central set of steps to the second floor, which is where the main entrance for students is. Above the entrance are some windows to let lots of light into the third floor. And above those windows is a large 2x2 clock on the roof to make sure that the students make it to class on time. Now, the nickname of the school is the Castle on the Hill. And when you look at the corners of the building, you can see the towers and the battlements that inspired that nickname. Now, I built the curved shape of the towers using a bunch of these 1x2 slash 1x2 hinge plates and tan, and I continued the tan stripes around the sides and the rear of the building. And these tan stripes are also where the floors of the school separate as well. Now, if you take a closer look at the towers, you'll see that I used a lot of these 1x2 profile bricks, or brick bricks in dark tan, to build them. In fact, I used almost a thousand of these throughout the whole building, with the only exception being in the rear section of the ground floor, where I just mixed in a few here and there for effect. The towers also have plenty of 2x2 and 2x3 windows, as do both sides of the building. And even though most inline modular buildings don't have windows on the sides because they're intended to be up against other buildings, I knew that this building would have exposed sides, so I included a lot of windows on the upper floors to let plenty of light into the classrooms. And while I did add windows to both sides of the building, I knew that the back of the building would face the wall, so I built the back pretty plain with the exception of two doors down on the ground level. Alright, now that we've seen the exterior, it's time to take a look at the interior. So, starting here on the second floor, as we go in the main entrance, there is a classroom on each side. Now, each classroom has four student desks, including one for lefties, a teacher's desk and chair, a chalkboard with a chalk trough below, and a clock above each chalkboard. And in the classroom across the hall is pretty much the same setup with the four student desks, the teacher's desk, chalkboard, and clock. Now, between the classrooms on the second floor is a staircase that leads up to more classrooms on the third floor. Now, the classroom on the left is an art class complete with easels and a fresh canvas for each student. And today, the students will be painting a nice bouquet of flowers to celebrate the coming of the warmer weather. And we can also see that this classroom also contains a teacher's desk and chair, chalkboard, and a clock as do the classrooms on the first floor. Across the hall, the classroom on the right is a science lab, and today the students are studying some prehistoric caveman bones and some saber-toothed tiger teeth. And again, you can see the science classroom also has a teacher's desk, chalkboard, and clock. Alright, now let's move down to the ground floor and take a look at the gymnasium. Now, the school colors are red and black, so just inside the front entrance, I used red and black for the tile floor. 
On one side of the main entrance is a display case with some gold and silver trophies. And on the other side of the main entrance is another display case with some news articles about the school. Inside the main part of the gym is a full basketball court. I built the hoops using 4x3 windows for the backboards and some minifig scale life preservers for the rims. Now, of course, real basketball rims are orange, but the minifig life preservers in orange are not only fairly rare, but also kind of expensive, so I decided to go with white because it was a part that I already had. Now, for the court itself, I started with some tan plates for the hardwood floor, and I used a combination of straight and curved tiles in black for the lines, including the keys, free throw lines, and three point lines. But for the center court line, I used two 4L lightsaber blades pressed down between the studs because after racking my brain for a while, it was the only way I could think of to get a line that was exactly at half court. But the coolest part of the gym, and I mean coolest literally, is under the basketball court. Because when I remove the floor of the basketball court, you can see the Olympic sized swimming pool underneath. Now I built the decking surrounding the pool using some 2x2 two two tiles in white, and I built the water first by laying down some plates in medium azure, and then topping them off with some transparent light blue tiles in a herringbone pattern, and I left some of the tiles sticking up in various places to make it look like there's waves in the pool. And when the kids are done swimming, the basketball court fits easily back into place. All right, there you have it, my Lego Mock High School Modular Building. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, you can let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please do. That is, of course, always greatly appreciated. And if you have a minute before you go, please leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. I'd also like to give a shout out to Mock Media, Lego bric a -Brac, Jacob Grabowski, and Armand Delau. And on that note, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.